It's time for this. There it is. 20 league titles and Manchester United have done the business. It's a result that has done potentially irreparable damage. Oh. Copenhagen 4, Manchester United 3. Welcome to the United Front. Yes, this is the United Front, our regular conversation about Manchester United. We try our best not to get it high in the programme, but after events in Copenhagen, a 4-3 defeat, United's faltering season uh, suffering another significant blow. Marcus Rashford's red card contributing uh, to a qualification damaging Champions League defeat by FC Copenhagen. Jermaine Pennant is punching the air because there is a goal check in Toulouse. Nothing has been given as yet, but the referee is jogging over to the screen. He's going over to review the goal. We'll update in a few moments' time. It is live for you over on TalkSport 2. And when we know what's happening, Jermaine, I will let you react to it. Let's talk Manchester United very quickly. They were 2-0 up and cruising thanks to a Rasmus Hoyland double. Uh, before um, Marcus Rashford was given a very harsh red card in the end. Um, But in the end, Manchester United also capitulated and they conceded four goals. They lost 4-3 and it leaves their Champions League hopes really in in tatters. They are bottom of their group at this point in time. As we mentioned earlier, if they're beaten by Galatasaray next time out, they will be out of the Champions League before we get to the final match of the group stage and that match against uh, Bayern Munich. And just to confirm, it's no goal, Jermaine, all right? So you can calm yourself down. Liverpool, 20 seconds away from defeat, out in Toulouse in the Europa League. What did you make of events, though? Manchester United last night. Look, they got off to a great start, 2-0, you know, within their first 20 minutes. And you can't blame Ten Hag for what happened after that. Um, So... It's definitely down to the players. Maybe could he have man- managed with the sending off? But still, you're thinking with 10 players, you should be, Manchester United should be still beating Copenhagen. And the way they just fell apart, two early goals straight after the, the sending off, they should have just got a little compact, got used to playing with 10 men, saw out the half, gone into the half time 2 0. Um, and then I, th- I think the outcome would have been a lot different. So you can't blame Ten Hag for that. The rest is on the players. He didn't know that Rashford was going to get sent off. Mm. He's put out a good team, good formation, good tactics, 2-0 flying. Then obviously the red card. That's nothing to do with Ten Hag. What happens next is not really it's to do with Ten Hag either. You're I not think... blaming Ten Hag for what happens when he's down to 10 men. He conceded, his side conceded four goals. Yeah, but that's not Ten Hag's issue. That's not, his, that's not down to Ten Hag. That's the players on the, on the pitch. They're the ones who are doing the doing the work. He's, he's made his substitutes, he's, he's made his tactics. And it's that if the players are not good enough to see out the the half against Copenhagen, then that's not Ten Hag's fault. All he can do is put his best players out there and they're on that pitch to do the the rest. There's only so much a manager can do. Yes, when results go don't go your way, you look to the manager, he always always say it's down to me. He takes the blame. Then after that, you look at the players. But like I said, this was kind of out of Ten Hag's hands. It was up to the players once again who did not step up to the plate. I was going to say I, I, I can't disagree more with that, but, you know, you saved it a little bit at the end. <laughs> it is in some some small part to do with the players because of the quality that's there. Let's be honest, this is not an exceptional Manchester United squad. But the manager, I think, has to take some responsibility to the fact that even though his side were two goals up, you know, we were allowing Copenhagen to have very comfortable possession and control over the game. Let me let me just explain how I saw the game. And even though they were 2-0 up, they were playing on the counter, playing well on the counter, scoring goals on the counter, taking Copenhagen apart, but on the counter attack. They were still largely behind the ball and defensive, waiting to counter, waiting to break, which is the game plan. It's fine for that to be your game plan, I think, against far better sides than Copenhagen. But this is a side, once again, that we see is so poor in possession and has such poor control over football matches that when they went down to 10, and I get it, it's a player less. You can't expect them to be, you know, 100%, clearly. But the style of Manchester United's team is one that doesn't have possession or control. So when you lose a player and you've allowed Copenhagen to have control of the ball, it isn't hard to see how they end up dictating the game on such an extent that it threw the game you know, 180 degrees, totally turned it around. 
based on the fact that Manchester United couldn't control any of the ball with 10 men. I watched that game and thought, even with 10 players, you know, if you're watching one of the best sides in Europe, Copenhagen don't get close to doing what they did to Manchester United last night. You know, at times it was easy for them. And I get it, again, I, I, look, it's a huge caveat. Manchester United had 10 players, but you can't exempt Eric Ten Hag from any responsibility because we know, you know, Jermaine, plenty of sides in the Premier League that wouldn't be conceding four goals against that but Copenhagen that's not, that's team. Not, yeah, with I, ten, I with, that. Even with ten players. But that's not Ten Hag's fault. That's the players at the that's the players' fault. That's the players on the pitch's fault. Ten Hag can't run around and close players down. That's the players' fault. And if you've seen people with possession in front of you, you close them down. But it's not my I, you, I'm you, saying that as a team, you defend as a team. But I'm that's saying not Ten Hag's to, fault. Ha, to have a side that is so poor in possession. Whose responsibility is that? Because the I think players. with the, ten, the, with ten men, if this was a possession based side who was good on the ball, they could have controlled the game still much more comfortably in longer periods than they did if they were a side that had just been coached better. The fact that they're a counter attack team <laughs> these means are you world, just these, these are international football players we're talking about. They don't need to they're be not coached. World beaters. They don't need they're to be coached. They're not well beaters. They've are they? been at Man United for years. They've been in the Premier League for years. They know how it goes. They've played in Champions League footballs. They've been at big stages. Often play for international. The internationals. They don't need to be coached. They know how to play football. This is not new to them. They know how to close the man down. They know how to defend. It's not Ten Hag's fault. The players are just not good enough or they're not bothered or they're not performing good enough. Ten Hag can't... He puts out his team. And if they're not willing to run, tackle, slide in, defend well, then there's not so much... There's only, only so much he can do. He's made the right sort of truth. He's brought Amrabat to make it a little bit defensive because they're down to 10 men. Then the rest is up to the team to step up. They didn't do it. They learn stupid goals. It's Copenhagen. It's not Ten Hag's fault. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.